The MacBook Pro 14 and 16 inch are the most powerful portable computers Apple makes, and they were recently upgraded with the M2 Pro and M2 Max chips. If you're trying to decide which one to get, here are the things you should consider. We'll go over what is in common between the two laptops, what each major difference is, and some reasons you may want to pick one over the other. We'll also look at exactly how much more the 16 inch version costs and what you get for that money. Hint, it's not as simple as the $500 difference in starting prices would have you believe. First, let's start with the similarities beginning with the outside. Both MacBook Pros are laptops, of course, and feature very similar designs that are essentially identical to the M1 Pro and Max versions previously. That includes the flat rectangular shape with slightly rounded corners and space gray or silver color options, and vents near the bottom of each side that, at least for me, feel a bit annoying digging into my fingers when picking it up. Alongside the same external design are the same set of ports, including three Thunderbolt 4 ports, an HDMI 2.1 port, an SDXC card slot that supports up to UHS-2 speeds, a 3.5mm headphone jack, and a MagSafe 3 power connector. Both sizes also have the same Magic Keyboard with Touch ID, along with a Force Touch trackpad, although the 16-inch models is a little bigger. Internally, both MacBook Pro sizes support Wi-Fi 6E as well as Bluetooth 5.3. They also have 1080p FaceTime HD webcams, as well as a slew of similar audio features. That includes advanced support for high impedance headphones on the 3.5mm audio jack, which means it can adapt for low and high impedance headphones as well as for line level audio devices. In addition, there's a studio quality 3 mic array. Those are likely fine for video calls, but they're not going to replace dedicated mics for those who need them. Now for our first hidden difference, the speakers. While on paper, both 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros offer a high fidelity six speaker sound system with the same list of features, Testing done by many have found the 16-inch model speakers to have slightly better sound quality. Of course, both sizes can be considered to have some of the greatest speakers you can find in a laptop. However, whether this is important or not is another matter to consider. If you're looking to use these laptops on the go in public places, then you might be using headphones or earphones most of the time when you need audio. If you're home, you might want to just take advantage of a separate speaker or home theater setup when watching movies, listening to music, or anywhere else where high quality audio is actually important. So think about whether you'll actually make use of these laptop speakers when considering whether the 16 inch models slightly better speakers is valuable or not. When it comes to upgrades, both the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros can be equipped with the Apple M2 Pro or M2 Max chips, as well as the same amount of unified memory and the same amount of SSD storage. Let's go over what each of these upgrade options are and briefly discuss the differences between M2 Pro and M2 Max chips. When we look at the base model chip options, we see our first difference between the 14 and 16 inch models. The base 14 inch model that costs $2,000 US comes with an M2 Pro with 10 core CPU and 16 core GPU, while the base 16 inch model that costs $2,500 has an M2 Pro with 12 core CPU and 19 core GPU. That's a $300 upgrade on the 14 inch model which also makes the actual price difference between similarly spec'd 14 and 16 inch models only $200. Going up another $200 from there gets you an M2 Max with the same 12 core CPU, but with a 30 core GPU, and stepping up another $200 increases only the GPU core count again to 38. We can see that the primary difference between M2 Pro and M2 Max chips is the graphics processing power, which includes an extra media engine as well on the M2 Max, meaning that it has two hardware accelerated video encoders versus just one on the M2 Pro. Now these $200 step ups don't seem that bad at first glance, but it's actually a lot more expensive than it appears. And that's because of the link between CPU, GPU, and unified memory. When it comes to speed, M2 Pro chips have 200 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, which is double that of the regular M2. Similarly, M2 Max chips have 400 gigabytes of memory bandwidth, double that of the M2 Pro. Now be careful not to take these numbers to mean that the entire computer is twice as fast. Whether an application benefits from these speed differences at all is entirely dependent on what it's doing. So I would personally not care about these numbers too much. The difference in unified memory that you may want to care about though is how much of it you can get. The M2 Pro MacBook Pros come with 16 gigabytes by default and you can upgrade to 32 gigabytes. However, to go up to 64 gigabytes requires you to choose the M2 Max chip and to go all the way up to 96 gigabytes requires the highest end M2 Max configuration. The unified memory upgrade prices are already quite exorbitant at $400 per step, but forcing the CPU and GPU upgrade at the same time makes the price shoot up super fast. 
The biggest travesty is that the first upgrade from 16 gigabytes to 32 gigabytes costs $400 in itself, but only gets you 16 gigabytes extra, while all the other step ups get you 32 gigabytes extra. Since that first step also doesn't force you to upgrade the CPU and GPU, I'm thinking Apple simply baked in that extra $200 into the unified memory line to ensure that they don't miss out on that margin. One other major difference between the M2 Pro and M2 Max models, besides the CPU, GPU, memory, and extra media engine, is the external display support. In particular, that $200 upgrade from the 1219 M2 Pro to the 1230 M2 Max doesn't just get you 11 more GPU cores, it also gets you two additional external displays. The M2 Pro chip can support only two additional displays beyond the built-in one. You have three configuration options, although the way it's written on Apple's website may be a little bit confusing. Option one is both displays via Thunderbolt reaching up to 6K resolution at 60 Hertz. Option two is one display via Thunderbolt up to 6K at 60 Hertz and one display over HDMI at up to 4K at 144 Hertz. And option three is only one display over HDMI reaching up to 8K at 60 Hertz or 4K at 240 Hertz. That means using a display over Thunderbolt will eat into the display bandwidth that the HDMI 2.1 port can provide. The M2 Max chip gives you more bandwidth to play with. You can freely use up to three external displays and still get the full 8K60 or 4K 240 over HDMI for one of them. Or you can use four external displays, which will limit the HDMI one to 4K at 144 Hertz again. Note that you can only use up to three displays over Thunderbolt, so one needs to be from the HDMI port. Keep in mind that all the configurations mentioned are while supporting the built-in laptop display as well. We'll talk about the differences between the 14 and 16 inch displays in just a bit. Let's get back to upgrade options. And next up is storage. The base models of both 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros come with 512 gigabytes of storage, and you can choose to upgrade to one, two, four, or eight terabytes. The cost per terabyte seems to remain consistent if you go above one terabyte at $300 per terabyte. However, keep in mind that you're actually upgrading from 512 gigabytes or half a terabyte, which means the actual costs per terabyte for each upgrade option are $400, $400, $343, and $320. Besides the space, the other hidden benefit you get from upgrading storage is SSD speed. Mac SSDs can use multiple storage chips in some cases, and doing so increases the read and write speeds as operations can be performed in parallel. It's been widely reported that the M2 MacBook Air and Pro, as well as the Mac Mini, all suffer from reduced SSD speeds versus the M1 models due to using a higher capacity but fewer number of storage chips. Apple advertises that the storage speeds up to 7.4 gigabytes per second, but they don't tell you exactly which configurations get you that speed. Various testing has revealed that SSD speeds will increase the most when going from the base model's 512 gigabytes to one terabyte, jumping from around 3,000 megabytes per second to 6,000 megabytes per second. Higher capacities may be faster, but not by much. Much like the unified memory speeds, I would recommend not placing much importance on the actual numbers here by themselves, but instead look at benchmarks for the applications that you're interested in running to see if it really makes a difference. For most of us, deciding whether to upgrade the storage should likely be a decision of how much storage capacity you need, not the sequential read and write speeds. However, before you pay extra for storage, consider if you need that much storage at the super fast internal SSD speeds, or if you just need storage. $400 per terabyte is pretty darn expensive. These days, you can get a four terabyte SSD for less than $300, which saves almost $1,000 compared to Apple's upgrade option. So think about if external storage will actually meet your needs while keeping your wallet intact. The final upgrade option to talk about is the power adapter. The base model 14 inch MacBook Pro comes with a 67 watt power adapter and you can upgrade to a 96 watt one for $20. What's interesting is that Apple forces you to upgrade to the 96 watt adapter if you upgrade the CPU from the base model as well, even if it's just to the higher M2 Pro chip rather than the M2 Max. Sure, they claim it's included as a free upgrade, but we all know that just means they baked it into the price. The 16 inch MacBook Pro comes with a 140 watt power adapter with all configurations, including the base model. This adapter isn't an option at all on the 14 inch model. The reason for the differences in power adapter wattage between 14 and 16 inch models is because the battery size and therefore battery life is also different. The 14 inch has a 70 watt hour battery that promises up to 18 hours of video playback and 12 hours of wireless web browsing. 
The 16 inch has more space in its body to contain a 100 watt hour battery that claims to deliver up to 22 hours of video or 15 hours of wireless web. Overall, I don't think that the power adapter upgrade being included in the CPU upgrades on the 14 inch model has much impact on whether you should upgrade the CPU or not. If you're someone who is always plugging things in at the last moment to squeak out an extra charge, then go for the 96 watt adapter if you get the 14 inch MacBook Pro, as it does support fast charge as well. However, battery life on these computers are quite excellent already, so if you regularly plug in your computers on a nightly basis, it probably won't matter at all. Let's talk about something that will matter, the size and weight of the laptop. The 14 inch MacBook Pro has dimensions of 12.31 by 8.71 inches, is 0.61 inches tall, and weighs three and a half pounds for the M2 Pro version or 3.6 pounds for the M2 Max. Now that's one hefty chip. The 16 inch MacBook Pro has dimensions of 14.01 by 9.77 inches, is slightly taller at 0.66 inches and weighs 4.7 or 4.8 pounds, about 34% more than the 14 inch model. The size and weight truly are the biggest downsides to the 16 inch model. I've had personal experience with both sizes as I tried out the 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro as well as the 14 inch M2 Pro model. For me, I definitely found the 16 inch way too big and heavy to carry around and much prefer the 14 inch size. Now this will differ for everyone, so there's no way to tell for sure until you've tried it for yourself. One of the reasons I thought I would like the 16 inch MacBook Pro more is because of the larger display. This is one area where Apple hasn't undersold on specs. The 14 inch model has a 14.2 inch Liquid Retina XDR display with a 3024 by 1964 resolution at 254 pixels per inch. The 16 inch model has a 16.2 inch display with a 3456 by 2234 resolution at the same 254 pixels per inch. Both have great colors, contrast ratios, and ProMotion support for refresh rates up to 120 hertz. I originally thought I was willing to trade on the size and weight of the 16 inch MacBook Pro because the larger higher resolution display means better multitasking with multiple windows. However, keep in mind that retina resolution means the effective resolution worth of screen real estate you get is actually half the width and height. Therefore, the 16 inches 3456 by 2234 screen actually has 1728 by 1117 pixels worth of screen real estate, while the 14 inch has 1512 by 982 pixels of real estate. That means you get just over 200 pixels of extra width on the 16 inch model. Ultimately, I found that I couldn't really multitask any better. I still needed windows to be full screen most of the time, such as when browsing the web, and I still needed to often command tab or expose to switch windows. There wasn't a lot of use I could find for something to live in a 200 pixel wide space. So depending on how you like to configure your window setup, better multitasking may not be a good reason to go 16 inches. The one place that the 16 inch MacBook Pro does have a clear advantage over the 14 inch, however, is in performance. While both models can be configured with the same M2 Pro or M2 Max chips, except for the 14 inches base model 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU configuration, there's actually a hidden difference in cooling now, it should be no surprise that the 16 inch model is able to cool itself better since it has a larger space to play around with. Others like Max Tech have done some insightful tests here. So what I'll say is just this. At idle and for most productivity tasks, both machines are completely silent. Prolonged, highly intensive workloads will perform better and with quieter fans on the 16 inch model. However, that does not include certain tasks like 4K video encoding, which is accelerated by the media engine. If maximum performance is what you're after, you should get the 16 inch model. In addition to this hidden performance difference, there's also a not so hidden one in a setting that is exclusive to 16 inch models with the M1 or M2 Max chips called high power mode. Under this mode, the fan will run at faster speeds, which makes more noise, but also produces more cooling for intensive workloads. However, some have tried to benchmark the difference that high power mode makes and found that it doesn't really improve performance, at least with the M1 Max. Not sure if it helps with the M2 Max, but given that the 16 inch doesn't seem to thermal throttle much if at all, my guess is it won't make much difference. All right, so the final difference to examine between the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros is the price. Yes, we did already say that the difference in 14 and 16 inch base models is $500, and that the M2 core 10 core CPU 16 core GPU option is not available on the 16 inch. So a similarly specced 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro only difference in price by $200. But what does that $200 really get you? On the negative, it gets you a physically larger and heavier machine. On the positive, 
it gives you a bigger display with more screen real estate, better sounding speakers, longer battery life, and the most substantial difference, better performance and cooling. So should you get the 14 inch or the 16 inch MacBook Pro? Here's how I see it in a nutshell. If you care about performance above all else, definitely get the 16 inch M2 Max model. If you want good enough performance, don't mind carrying a heavy bag and often use a laptop on a desk, so size and weight are not an issue. Often play music or videos with the speakers and want the best sound quality, can benefit from the larger screen and screen real estate, and are in situations where the computer is not plugged in so you want the maximum battery life, then the 16 inch M2 Pro model may be suitable for you. If most of the reasons I just mentioned don't apply to your use case, or you value portability for travel convenience more, or you just want the best value, then get the 14 inch M2 Pro MacBook Pro. I don't really see a reason to go for a 14 inch M2 Max, unless you're in a niche category of needing the best performance for just short spurts. If you can wait for things to take longer due to being slower, you might as well save money and go for the M2 Pro. If you can't wait, then you'd be better served with the 16 inch M2 Max. All right, so there we have it. I hope this comparison between the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros and partially the M2 Pro and M2 Max chips has been helpful. Subscribe if you want to see more comparison videos in the future. Thanks for watching and have a great day.